everybody likes multifunctional things, there are some great examples. Swiss Army Knives, Transformers, the McGriddle, Grandparents, which are just like parents, but you, they give cool Christmas gifts, so that's just like real people. The microwave with a toaster, something called a ZO or DZO, which are hybrids between domestic cattle and yaks, and get this, they are bigger and stronger than their parents. Talk about a level up. Uh, there's lots of cool things out there that are really great when combined. So with all this love for mixing and matching, it's a little weird that the accepted wisdom is that you can't mix messaging infrastructure and databases. These days, however, a lot of messaging systems are built on databases and a lot of databases can support messaging. Did you know that Postgres can be an amazing messaging system as well as an amazing database? I didn't until I read this fantastic article by Raphael Winterhalter. He created ByteBuddy, which is a bytecode manipulation library. I think he's a fabulous person. That's a fabulous library, except it should be called Bytecode buddy, I fixed it for you, Raphael. Postgres is my all-time Double Dutch favorite SQL database. It's boss soft software that does many things well, including messaging. You can use built-in functions like notify and listen to send and consume messages from one client to another. So it's messaging, and what better way to think about messaging than Spring Integration, which is a pipes and filters enterprise integration framework. The world of application integration is rife with asynchronicity and messaging, and Spring Integration models that perfectly. It's my favorite framework for pulling together disparate pieces of tech, and there's a reason. It's simple. You compose messaging processing pipelines by writing integration flows, which are composed of components that act on messages. The output of one message is the input to another. It's a true pipes and filters programming model. Let's start with the basics. I've got two tabs, each logged into a Postgres instance. I'm using Docker Compose, by the way. Here's the definition. It's also in the source code for this project on github.com coffee software show. I use this Postgres configuration a ton. So it's gotten to the point that I just put the connection information for my development machine in environment variables. So now both applications will see the same environment variables because they're both running on my local machine and they'll apply them to configure certain properties like spring.datasource.url, spring.datasource.username, and spring.datasource.password. Neat. Let's see it in action. We use the listen command to listen to an arbitrary channel, which I'm just going to name MQ, uh, but you can name anything. And on, on the other side, in the other tab, we'll notify messages uh, and send messages to that first one, both sending and receiving from MQ. So there you go. I return to the left tab and listen again, and there's the message I sent. Let's head to the Spring Initializer, which is my second favorite place on the internet. I hope you know what my first is. It's production. I give you a hint. Obviously. But do you know where my third is? It's this channel, and it should be yours too. Like and subscribe, will ya? Spare not for the algorithm, please. Anyway, let's call this new module producer. We'll add a few dependencies, Postgres, integration, and JDBC, and then we'll open it up in the IDE. Any IDE will do. Before you can get started, we need to install some schema from Spring Integration, which is conveniently packaged in the jar files on the class path. You can open the schema with Command Shift A and IntelliJ on, on the Mac or uh, you know, the equivalent in your other operating systems. Copy and paste the schema and make sure to uncomment the function at the bottom. Then pipe that right into your database. Don't ask questions. What could go wrong? We'll start at the beginning, just like F. Scott Fitzgerald and the Great Gatsby or Kurt Vonnegut in Slaughterhouse 5. And yes, I used ChatGBT to come up with these literary references. I, for one, welcome our new AI overlords. Anyway, we'll build a spring event listener that'll run when the app starts up and inject a message channel uh, through which to send out a message. We want the channel that we use in this app to be durable and to store its data in Postgres. So we'll create a JDBC channel message store and name it JMS. Then finally, we'll create the message channel itself and use the JDBC channel message store. Run the program and then log into the database to inspect the results. There it is in black and white or white and black, the serialized contents of our message in our database. Does anybody else feel like you're peeping into something that shouldn't be seen and gazed upon when you look at serialized data? Yuck. Back to the lab again. This time, create a new module called Consumer. Same as last time, JDBC, Integration, Postgres. When you open the application up, make sure to update the, the Gradle build or your Maven build so that the dependency for Postgres itself is on the class path as opposed to just on the runtime class path. Create a, another JDBC channel message store, again, pointing to the same exact Postgres database. Uh, that is, after all, the link between the producer and the consumer, right? That's the messaging infrastructure in this case. This time, instead of creating a regular message channel, we're going to create a Postgres subscribable channel that uses our JDBC channel message store and a new thing called a Postgres channel message table subscriber. That Postgres 
channel message table subscriber is going to have uh, a dedicated connection to the Postgres database. We can't use and we shouldn't use the connection that we get from a, a connection pool because those tend to get closed up after a certain amount of time. We need something that's dedicated to this particular use case and that doesn't get shut down. So we provide a PG connection supplier by delegating to the data source uh, that we get from the driver manager, which is basic JDBC. Uh, and we're going to use the strings for the username, password, and uh, URL that we get from the data source properties, which in turn is the configuration properties object, which has bound the environment variables uh, to the fields. The final piece, of course, is that we need to have something that receives a message. So I'll create a uh, service activator. This is a integration pattern that'll look for uh, messages that are coming in from that channel, that input channel, uh, and uh, respond to it or do something with it. In this case, we're just defining a method that takes a string payload. We could also make it a message of string payload. But either way, we're just logging out the results. So now we have a producer and a consumer that are listening to the same database. Uh, obviously, we need to add a bit of code here just to make sure that it doesn't um, it start up and then immediately shut down because there's nothing keeping it running. So we'll have a little thread that current thread that join call here at the end, run the application on the consumer, then go back to the producer, the first bit of code that we created, run it a couple of times and you'll see that reflected in their logs in the console for the consumer. Consolidation is inevitable. This isn't always desirable, but at least insofar as having distinct infrastructure for both messaging and databases concerned, maybe less is more.